training. I'm a landscape ecologist interested in modeling how humans affect biodiversity. And this was really the input for this TIC project. We know that humans fragment the forest to build uh, places for, for houses. And we also know that the fragmentation of the forest will attract deer. And deer are a, a host of the Lone Star Tick. And the disease that the Lone Star Tick carries that has a, a detrimental effect to humans is called the Ehrlichia chaffinsis. It can have long-lasting neurological um, effects on a, on a human. And it can actually kill people. Got 38 pellets. We drag a white square, one meter square cloth across the ground, and the ticks will grab a hold of that as if it's a host. So they'll, they're on the leaf litter and they're, you know, waving their little arms around, waiting for, for an animal to come by, and they'll just grab a hold. And then I'll bring those back. As Matthias said, we, we freeze those immediately at negative 80 Celsius, so real cold. And then when it's time to analyze them, I'll, uh, we'll put them in the vial with the little glass beads. I'll be, uh, put in this machine that shakes it really violently. It cracks up their exoskeleton. Uh, put in enzymes that help break down their cellular tissues, release DNA into solution, and then run it through a process to, to filter the DNA out while getting rid of all the extra proteins and cellu cellular debris, as that's called. Uh, and then that leaves me with just a, a solution of hopefully nothing but DNA. And if it's just a tick that's not infected with EC or Ehrlichia, um, then it'll just be tick DNA. Uh, but if it is infected with Ehrlichia, then that solution will contain both tick and Ehrlichia DNA. Important thing for us is that the DNA basically got moved out of the tick and is now accessible for our extraction buffer in the, for the DNA extraction. We will take the tick DNA extract, put it in the top here, close this down, put it into this little tube here, and then, um, the, as I said, the tick DNA extract goes right in the top and then we will spin it through. Basically, the liquid that's in here will be pushed through the DNA binding matrix and end up at the bottom. So this, this one's from Chesapeake, uh, city of Chesapeake on July 11th. And this has a nymph and an adult in it, so I'll take this one soon. The way the humans change the, their surroundings will actually increase their chance of being exposed to this disease. So by fragmenting forest, we make a perfect environment for deer. Like I said before, deer are the carrier for Lone Star Tick. They also carry the disease, and thereby humans are increasingly exposed at higher levels to, to the disease. In this case, the motivation for, for that question is really one of human welfare. And so can we model the effect of, can we have modeled the effect of habitat fragmentation or of human land use alterations on human disease risk? And if, um, and if so, then we can find, you know, what areas are safe to recreate, but we can also hopefully find sort of thresholds of, of change between, so you know, in these low density, these rural areas in which we start putting in low density housing, uh, can we can we find a threshold of disturbance below which the community won't be altered so strongly? A lot of stuff that looks like